the science makes the match and picks the Bulls. Crew, let's ranch it up. Good day, everyone, and thanks for riding with us in this all-new episode of the Ranch It Up Radio Show, episode number 120. I'm Jeff Tigger Earhart. A big thank you goes out to our partners, the Keller Broken Heart Ranch, Pharmatan and Imogene Ingredients, the Tri-State Livestock News, the Farmer and Rancher Exchange, and the Fence Post, Westway Feed Products, Allied Genetic Resources, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, and AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, the Cowboy Channel, and Wrangler. Now to the newsroom we go. This story that's been trending online. Consumers not looking to reduce meat intake. This is a brand new survey that just came out. Now, while consumers are spending significantly more for food than they did last year, the desire to cut on meat intake has not increased. That is according to a new survey conducted by Purdue University. The second annual Consumer Food Insight Report released by the University's Center for Food Demand Analysis and Sustainability said earlier last week that they found that on average food prices have risen about 20% from a year ago. However, meat purchases have not fallen in any kind. This is another good news that we're getting. They say that people are generally knowledgeable about the actions needed to improve health, and want to pursue them. They say, however, they don't necessarily want to give up on taste and indulgence, indulgences. Excuse me. For example, eating less meat is low on the list of priorities of most Americans. That is according to Purdue Agricultural Economics Professor Jason Lusk. Now, this report goes on to say that instead, the survey found that consumers are interested in eating more fruits and vegetables and less sugar and as a means by improving health. And the only idea consumers liked less than cutting back on meat was growing your own food. Purdue experts conducted and evaluated the survey, which included about 1,200 consumers from across the United States. Now, cattle and cow numbers low, not just in the United States, but across the continent, The 2021 drought is still impacting the cattle herd numbers in Canada. Now, in 2021, Canada experienced widespread drought conditions in many different areas, declaring state of agriculture disasters. The number of cattle on farms and ranches in 2021 was the lowest that it's been since 1969. Since the peak in 2005, the number has declined 42% to just 1 million in Manitoba, for example, in the year 2022. Now, in 2022, the total number of cattle in the province of Manitoba fell nearly 7% from 2021, with cattle for beef operations dropping by almost 8%. And that's a look at what's making news in cow country at this time. The production sales are in full swing. We're going to start in St. Anthony, North Dakota, the Schaff Angus Valley, the 120th annual production sale, 397 bulls averaged. You ready for this? $15,775, 207 females averaged $13,000. Four hundred and eighty-five dollars. The top female selling for three hundred and seventy-five thousand, and the top bull coming in and selling for a quarter of a million at two hundred and fifty thousand. Now moving on to Top Herefords, their thirteenth annual production sale in Gray City, North Dakota. One hundred and forty-two yearling bulls coming in with an average of sixteen thousand five hundred and fifty-six dollars. Eighty-five two-year-old bulls coming in with an average of thirteen thousand three hundred and fifty-three, and then fifty-seven commercial F1 baldy bred heifers. These are commercial F1 baldy bred heifers. You ready for this? Twenty-eight fifty. So I tell you what, there is an enormous amount of confidence in this cattle business, isn't there? And I'm going to wrap this one up in the uh, in the semi pen. TNT Semitols, their 38th annual production sale, 106 bulls averaged nine thousand seven hundred and thirty six dollars. Sixty four black bulls they averaged eleven thousand fifty one, and then forty two red bulls they averaged seven thousand seven hundred and thirty two dollars. Like I said, an enormous amount of confidence 
in this cattle business going forward. Now, if there are certain sales that you would like us to report on, gain or gather information, just fire us an email or text me, and I will certainly dig up that information for you. Now, coming up next, the science dictates this one. Stick around. We've got more of the Ranch It Up Radio Show, and it's coming up right after this. Before you purchase your next set of bulls or females, remember this. The seed stock business is about genetic improvement and customer service. Ally Genetic Resources understands this as well as anyone. Marty Rop with Ally. That's our charge as, as seed stock producers is you know, people look at us and you've got to make genetics that work better for us. We see that charge. We understand that charge. And we're going to use all the tools we can to get there. Ally Genetic Resources, where the mission is commercial customer success period. The Keller Broken Heart Ranch invites you to come see high-performing Simmental and Simangus Genetics Thursday, March 2nd, 1 p.m. at the ranch south of Mandan, North Dakota. Selling 120 of the industry's highest-performing and profitable Simmental and Simangus bulls with volume discounts, along with 80 outstanding replacement heifers. View the catalog and videos online at kbhrsimmental.com. Can't make the sale? No problem. We're broadcasting live at dvauction.com. It's valuable genetics worth waiting for. And we'll see you March 2nd, 1 p.m. Central Time at the Keller Broken Heart Ranch. The Tri-State Livestock News, what ranchers read. Stop by your local sale barn or livestock center and grab the latest issue of the Tri-State Livestock News. From the latest cattle market reports to various news stories within the ag industry, the Tri-State Livestock News covers it all. You can also check us out at tsln.com. And for those of you that might be interested in subscriptions or advertising, please give me a call, Tracy Hawk, at 406-951-3211. The Tri-State Livestock News, what ranchers read. The Ranch It Up Radio Show, as much information as we can pack into a 30-minute program as possible. Dwight and Susan Keller. Well, they purchased their first Simmental bull back in 1982. They registered their first set of Simmental calves in 1983. Today, Keller Broken Heart Ranch in Mandan, North Dakota, is a leader in Simmental and Simangus genetics. Many of the bulls that are in stud are domed with the KBHR prefix. Dwight and Susan's son, Luke, he joins us to talk about how using the latest technology, working with allied genetic resources and analyzing data, have taken much of the guesswork out of bull selection, out of genetic selection, out of matings, all of these different programs that we talk about, from feed efficiency to how to use the right choice program from allied genetic resources to understanding genomically enhanced EPDs comes down to this using all of that information that we talk about to make better bull buying decisions. What is going to work for you and I? Raising a better and more consistent product, talking about beef and carcasses, and getting a premium for doing so. So our our main focus is towards uh, commercial cow-calf profitability. And so we're trying to raise animals that, that, you know, really kind of do it all. Um, the the main tools i guess that we've gone to utilizing to do this is is the all purpose index and the terminal index from the american cemental association what they are is is life cycle indexes that basically put a a dollar value on every expense and and also on every potential avenue of income and uh, in terms of economically relevant traits and they utilize uh USDA Meat Animal Research Center data and um, other market analysis information as well. So they're kind of the two all-encompassing dollar index values in terms of like fertility and carcass value and growth and calving ease and all of that is, is included into those two indexes. And that's kind of the main most important tool, I guess, that that we've found it, it for one thing, we found that it works in terms of we retain ownership in our steers and our more profitable steers are higher for all purpose index and terminal index versus the lower profitability steers. Very confident that it'll work for our uh, commercial customers in the same way. So. Luke, you're using all of the different technology and data that you can. You are working with allied genetic resources. You're working on matings. You're, you're making sure there are no wasted matings. You are 
eliminating different variables and you're utilizing genetics to their ultimate potential. Talk to me a little bit about the correlation of the uh, genetic data that you're pulling together with the phenotype of the cattle themselves. Yeah, so we've always obviously had a focus on, on phenotype as well. We're still selecting cattle that we like to look at. Uh, it's just that in addition to selecting those type of cattle, we're making sure that they have a certain level of genetic value, you know, that it, that it's not just phenotype. When I worked at the American Cemental Association for a number of years, Jerry Lipsy, the former CEO, he was my boss who, who hired me. And one time I uh, made a comment about a, a female that sold for a lot of money at a, at a sale. And Jerry made the comment to me that, uh, you know, Luke, there are cattle in this industry that you will really enjoy to look at their physical features but they just aren't very valuable to the commercial cow-calf industry. And he said there are cattle in this industry that maybe you really don't like to look at their physical mm -hmm. features, but they are valuable. That kind of really got me to thinking that he's probably right, because I think that heifer that sold, if you were to make steer mates to her or steer calves out of her, I mean, they would have been you know, at best select kind of carcasses, mm -hmm. you know, and that it doesn't matter what they look like at that stage, they're just not going to make you money. So it is important to understand what drives commercial profitability. Now, obviously stuff like the things that we think of in terms of longevity, all of that is important. And, you know, we want to have that. And what we found is that typically better API type cattle, there's a positive correlation between cattle that do that just because of, you know, that if they're higher API, they're going to end up being better in terms of longevity, fertility, things like that. And usually that means they're better structured, better footed, better made kind of cattle too. So so when you say uh, commercial profitability, uh, what goes into that equation for you? I'd say the best way to analyze it is is the all-purpose index and, and everything that pours into that. So you know, first of all, to be profitable, you have to have a born a, a calf that's born alive, mm -hmm. you know. So let's start on a, a live born calf. From there, you want it to uh, be healthy, you know, to, to survive, to last and to grow and to wean and have positive growth rate and to put the pounds on in the feedlot and to stay healthy and stay alive. And then if it's a terminal animal, you know, you want it when you go to uh uh, harvest that carcass. You want to have some carcass quality. You want some yield. Uh, all of that stuff plays into the profitability aspect. And if it's a heifer, it needs to breed. It needs to, to, to stay in the herd, to last, to not exit the herd for any way. All of those traits we measure. Now we can go online to the website, KBHR Semental, KBHRSemental.com. You've got the sale book on there. You've got uh, videos on there. There's going to be other information that you're collecting in terms of ultrasound data. Scrotal will be updated on the website. And we've touched on this before in terms of three simple ways to categorize the bulls, to get the sort before you even come to the sale. And that is according to the uh, the right choice designation, which is ACE, a G+, plus, and an ATM. And it's real simple. The ACE bulls are your calving ease bulls, the ATMs are your terminal bulls, and the G pluses are the ones in the middle. So just a very common question uh, prior to the bull sales, what's what's a good heifer bull? Mm -hmm. And uh, the easiest way to, to describe it is the ACEs are your surefire heifer bulls. Don't buy an ATM bull and use it as a heifer bull. You know, and it it breaks down really easily that way. And if you want, if you're like, you know, thinking, man, I just need performance. I got this group of cows that I, you know, uh, I, I want to breed to a big terminal bull and I'm going to send them all to the feedlot and that's going to be my payday for the year. You know, you probably want to focus on, on the ATM type bulls and, and not utilize an ace bull in that sort of situation. So um, I really like the ACE and ATM designations just for making it very simple on what's a heifer bull, what's your power performance bulls. And uh, the G plus bulls, they're kind of the bulls that do it all. If you're uh, looking for uh, a bull that has growth and performance, but also 
uh, want uh, some, uh, you know, potentially retain some females as well out of that, you know, look for a G plus ATM rated bull. Or if you're looking for uh, uh, just a good all around kind of bull, you know, that G plus uh, kind of a correlation to, uh, to basically the all purpose index, their ability to look at specific high impact uh, markers in terms of different genes that they make sure that they have in the positive direction to go with that high API bull. So that's kind of what the G plus is. It keeps coming back to profitability in terms of the whole animal life cycle, you know, and if, if we're doing what we need to in terms of measuring fertility traits and measuring stability and, and calf survivability vigor and and health and all of those things and then also on the terminal side in terms of growth and output traits like uh you know uh, conversion and even feed efficiency now there's so much that really does impact our bottom line and it's all important you know we've got grow safes in and we're doing feed efficiency and i think that is important all that information is important but it's only one piece of the pie, and that that whole thing is is overall profitability. And so our our cow herd followed what API and TI has done for us, and you know we're trying to maintain that or or continue to improve that. And uh, you know we're kind of in the top percentages of the breed for both, and we continue to track that and. And try to continue to improve that so that uh, we're improving our, our commercial bull clientele in that direction as well. Luke and I, we were talking off air that we could literally sit and visit for hours about the data and the technology that goes into managing the herd on the Keller Broken Heart Ranch. Luke, great to visit with you. KBHRSemental.com. KBHRSemental.com to view the sale book and the videos of the bulls. Thursday. March 2nd at the ranch south of Mandan, North Dakota. You can bid and buy online at dvauction.com. And the right choice designations, the ACE, the ATM, and G pluses that we were just talking about, making it easy to sort the bulls. Well, it literally, using these parameters, for example, it literally took me just a few minutes to break my selections down. I said, I need a Cavanese bull. I want him homo polled. I want him homo black. That's what I'm going to look for. It literally took me just a few minutes to to sort and write down the lot numbers that fit in. And now I go back and I look at the videos and then bid on the one that you like. It makes it that easy. So, Luke, thanks so much for the time and head to kbhrsemental.com. Give Luke a call if you've got any questions. They'll be more than happy to help you all out. Now, stick around, crew. We've got Kirk. He's hanging out. We've got the market update, and it's coming up right after this. Livestockmarket.com is the go-to online marketplace for livestock, horses, hay, and straw. Sales manager Mark Vanzi tells us how easy it is to use. Cattleman can take photographs, videotape his own calves. He can upload them directly to the site. He can sell them private treaty. He can sell them on the online auction. The biggest principle behind the whole livestockmarket.com concept is producer has complete control. The online platform that works without all the restrictions. Livestockmarket.com on Facebook, too. Can I interest you in live calves this winter and spring? How about getting rid of scours? I've talked about Pharmatan from Imogene Ingredients before, and I'm bringing it up now because your cows need to have Pharmatan in their system 90 days pre-calving to help eliminate scours. Pharmatan is now on my team of experts, so if you need some more information or have questions, just get a hold of me. You can head online to PharmatanUSA.com. You can look up Pharmatan on Facebook and Imogene Ingredients or call 515-745-1639. Watch RFD-TV anytime, anywhere on all your connected devices with RFD-TV now. Simply go to watchrfdtv.com and sign up for just $9.99 a month or save more and pay just $89.99 for the year. You can begin streaming RFD-TV live right away and have access to your favorite shows 24-7 on demand. Go to watchrfdtv.com, sign up, and start streaming today. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for hanging with us. Kirk Donsbach, Stonex Financial Incorporated. Kirk, how you doing? What's the numbers? There's a whole lot there. What's going on? 
I'm doing very well, Tigger. As of Friday, February 10th, March feeders closed the week at 186.40. That's up 42.5 cents on the week with the CME feeder index at 183.09, up $1.64 on the week. That leaves our basis or the difference a negative $3.31. April live cattle closed at 164 and two and a half cents, down 15 cents on the week, so basically flat, with cash trading 157 to 161. The five area weighted average was up 330 at 158.98. And remember, we had uh, cattle with lots of tag or mud on them, and we're kind of coming out of that. So a lot of that move is, is the live cattle price and then less tag. Our basis closed the week at a negative $2.22 versus February futures. Take note that the basis I quoted is against February futures, and the price I quoted was April live. There was one delivery tendered in Nebraska on 10 loads of cattle. That also very much gets my attention this week. The weekly slaughter was 630,000, down 11,000 head week over week, and down 41,000 head versus last year with choice boxes. Closing the week at 269.66 at $4.92. That widened the spread out $2 to $15.37. To wrap this up, March corn closed the week at 680 and three quarters, up three and a half cents. They got spillover support from the wheat market with Russia launching their spring offensive. Now, before I say fairly well, I want to pin you down here a little bit, Kirk. There is a lot of talk that uh, we could see these uh, these calves, these feeder cattle, and you've seen the sale barn reports too. I mean, there is some outrageous prices that are being paid, and there's starting to be some talk that is circulating that there is the potential that we could see prices higher than what we saw in 2014. Now, I know you can't say, well, yes, you know, guaranteed, but in your opinion, do you think that, hey, there is potential that, uh, that we could start seeing some of, these, some of these higher, higher, higher prices? I think there's definitely the potential for that for significantly higher prices, but it's going to come down to, in my opinion, it's going to come down to break-evens, and that's uh-huh. largely either we have to push live cattle much higher, like $10 higher, $5 higher at least, or corn has to go down, drop in the cost of gain. If we look at corn for a minute, if corn would significantly drop, lower those costs of gains, get break-evens at work, who knows how high the high is. In the meantime, with the way everything is now, we're looking at negative break-evens, and that's very concerning for how high the market could potentially hold. So when we look at inventory numbers, how much does that have to play directly with affecting the price of those feeder calves? You know, because that's been a lot of the talk is a lot of those heifers have not been retained, and they've been going and they're being harvested and going into the food chain. So how much does that cattle inventory number, you know, cows and calves, how much does does that number affect those feeder cattle prices? It definitely affects And if you look at it now, most of the optimism, or maybe even all of the optimism, is directly tied to the decline in supply, which is a very valid argument. Our supply is undeniably lower than it has been. With that being said, the guys buying the calves, the feeders, they still need to make money. The guys buying the meat still need to be able to afford to buy the meat. So all the demand issues still are very much at play. Just right now, as as all markets are emotional, the emotional tug is the supply side dominating the market. In essence, that's why we keep getting the higher, higher prices. Hey, all. Mark Banzi with equinemarket.com. Coming up this Wednesday, February 22nd, we have our monthly online horse auction. Bidding opens at just $100. No reserve. All horses will sell. This month's sales features two fantastic horses to add to your string, both of them being offered by MTS Quarter Horses in Ada, Oklahoma. First, we've got Stormy. She's a black quarter pony mare. She's seven years old. She stands 13-3. She's great around cattle and stout enough to drag calves. She's been around all types of ranch work. She'll go through creeks over logs and bridges. She hauls well, loads and backs out of the trailer quietly. She's sweet and gentle. No buck, no bite, no kick, no vice, as anybody can ride her. She's got solid feet, and she's up to date on all her shots, worming and coggins. Then we've got J-Lo. She's a sorrel halflinger mare. Now, she's 14 years old. She stands 14 hands high. She's been used on the ranch and drug calves to the fire, stands quietly to be mounted, very sure-footed, and she can travel anywhere. She'll go through the water over the logs without hesitation or spooking. She's also up to date on all of her coggins, worming, and shots. 
bidding on both these horses opens at just $100, and it's currently live, but both horses are going to sell the morning of Wednesday, February 22nd. Got horses to sell? Regular online horse auctions are the fourth Wednesday of every month on equinemarket.com and auctiontime.com. I tip my hat to you from one legend to another. Now, before we say fare thee well, a big tip of the hat goes out to all of you that have started calving already, those of you that that are on the move. You've got the 2 a.m. check. Hey, wish you the best of luck. Be safe out there, by the way. And now that's going to wrap it up for today. A big thanks from our crew to yours, Luke Keller with Keller Broken Heart Ranch. We're going to have some updates, more updates with Luke next week on what's going on with the sale. Mark Van Zee with LivestockMarket.com. Appreciate it. Each and every week, Mark calls in and gives us just a little nugget, if you will. For more information, go to LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, and AuctionTime.com. Kirk Donsbach with StoneX Financial Incorporated. I always appreciate you for giving us a little bit of a recap of what happened the week before and maybe what we need to look forward to going on in the future. And now the big thank you goes out to our partners, Keller Broken Heart Ranch, Pharmatan, and I'm a Gene Ingredients, the Tri-State Livestock News, the Farmer and Rancher Exchange, and the Fence Post, Westway Feed Products, Allied Genetic Resources, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, the Cowboy Channel and Wrangler. And now, crew, so glad you all came with us one more time as we ranch it up. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook at Ranch It Up Show, our email. You can get a hold of me 24-7, Ranch It Up Show at gmail.com. Call and text me 24-7. The number is 707-RANCH20. Just text 707 707- Ranch 20. Now, spread the good word and join us again next week where it's always Tigger Approved. Stay ranchy and ranch it up. <laughs>